Morning guys, what do you need in January? Cup of tea. It's cold, we're British, we talk about the weather. What are you here to talk about today? Well, it's a Piaggio Zip, but this is any sort of bike really. Most of the upgrades are doing bikes have already got a sport exhaust. The speed fire actually comes with quite a good exhaust in the first place. But on a lot of other bikes, this Piaggio Zip for instance, was brought into England the same sort of time as all the others, 1999, little one they had, Mark II and so on. A um, bit cheaper. Um, but they weren't as fashionable or sporty looking as the other ones, so they didn't sell that well. But they did come in with a major flaw, 30 mile an hour restricted. Most of them were, but these ones were really like that. Tricked by exhaust, um, 54 jet, and obviously standard air filter and rollers. So they weren't that popular. The Gilero Runner really overtook this one, NRG, um, Air Roxes and so on. But they all had the same problem with these standard exhausts. This little life of this one came here, 30 mile an hour. Someone put a sports exhaust and upjetted it, happy days. Um, good speed out of it. Went to a shop and they decided to uh, set it and the person went have done an old rusty exhaust. Now these exhausts do get rusty on here, they're going to do it anyway. Unless you get top of the range ones and they still rust. So the person came in and said I don't want that exhaust on them, I put a stand exhaust on it and that's when the problem started. So they didn't down jet it, um, the person realised 30 mile an hour. I suppose it wouldn't start occasionally because you're getting too much fuel in and it went back and forth a few times. So I end up with it. Realising it's got standard exhaust and coming from a shop, I'd assume that they dejected it. Watch my video on that guys, I normally upjet, I had to dejet this one. Because it what was happening, it was starting okay. They've all got a knack to start. Remember these bikes aren't brand new. Some you kick start, some you electric start, some you can press the button, can't touch the throttle, other ones you have to open and so on. This one, touch accelerator and then rev ever so slightly, bike runs. But of course, that's a knack, isn't it? person who had this off me um, would start it, start a couple of times, but then either they had the throttle open one day, or they started and stalled, whatever, all of a sudden, wouldn't start. It was flooding the piston, basically. It was flooding, not getting burned in petrol, and it was simply just soiling up the plug. So it wouldn't start. Take the plug out, wipe it, put it back in again, away she goes again. So it was nothing to do with air petrol mix screw, I messed around with that. Obviously it was doing like 24 mile an hour, so I changed the rollers. Um, I got it running really well, I thought, up to 40 mile an hour. Very slowly, but it did go up to 40 mile an hour, it just took its time. But we're at the bit now where I had to do de-jet it, I had to then change the lighter rollers, and now she pulled her really quickly, she started every time, but guess what, back to 30 mile an hour. Uphill was a little bit scary, 15, 16, 17. And you can't do that on British roads. I know the law states 30 mile an hour is supposed to be 16. But you get on the road and do that. Because these bikes don't do 30 up a hill. They do 10, 15 mile an hour. And that's quite scary when you've got a big truck or lorry or whatever behind you. So I say to them people that say, 30 mile an hour, you go on the road. You try it, mate. Because it's a bit scary. On another winter ride I did earlier, and you'll see it took this video out. The clutch was jammed on this little speed fight. On a flat, it did 14 miles an hour. But going uphill, 20. You know, and on back roads around here in a rural area, it's just in urban areas and so on, it's just not clever. What are we doing to this now, anyway? Well, with some penetrating spray. Keep saying WD-40, but... Uh, we're going to take this exhaust off. I've bought a new sports exhaust for this bike. I know that that will make this bike be a lot, lot happier. Bikes tend to... They're not living things, I know, but if you upjet a bike and you change the exhaust and it runs really happy, when you change it back again, they just don't like it. Carbon builds up in certain places, the piston wears in certain places, and when you try and go back to restriction again, they just hate it. Um, and that's a fact, unless you change a new engine again. So, we're going to take this exhaust off and put a sports exhaust on. I've ordered it today, it'll be here midweek, so I'm going to take it off now, ready for it. But I'm going to change the exhaust first. Remember, I've got a 62 jet. If you watched the video on here, I changed the 62.5 jet and the standard airbox still and the setting. I'm going to change the exhaust and leave it. See what she does. I'm going to ride up and down. If I'm not happy, I'll up jet the 68. If I'm not happy, I'll change the rollers. I'm going to add about 10 grams to the rollers. They're about 24 something like that now. I really had to get them light. I'm going to change them back up another 10 grams and hopefully now the gas is coming out because you need to have guys. You need to have three things to make a bike go faster. More air in, more fuel in, and the gases to get out. Nice and simple. You can't just do one or two things. You put a sports um, air filter on there, you're going to suck lots of air in, and you will have starting problems, and uh, the plug will soil up all the time. You put more petrol in, not enough air, and so on, you get this where it starts and floods. But you get all three, and there's a sweet spot. If you get all three, 
the bike will love you, hammer along. You're always going to lose a bit of miles per gallon, but these do 80 miles per gallon anyway, so it's negligible really, isn't it? Still a cup of tea, it's cold. Exhaust, my top tip. In this cold weather, start your bike just for a little bit, just so it warms up. Don't burn your bloody hands, I'm talking about. Just so the engine warms up, a little bit of the exhaust heats up to a, um, a warm temperature. Turn it off. Spray your repellent, spray uh, repellent. <laughs> spray your W40, your maintenance spray, spray that on the two nuts. You do not want to snap them. Snap is bad. Believe you me, I couldn't tell you any more than that. You snap them. There's none of this drill them out because you drill it goes left, right, up, around it. It's an alley head. You never seem to get the screw properly. And then what happens is that you put it back on again and it doesn't screw. Then you've got to change the head. Water cord, more problems. You get what I'm saying. Don't snap them. Take them off nice and gently. Get them off. Then do the other two or three bolts, whatever holds the back of the exhaust on. Take it off. All right, wait for your new one. That should fit in exactly the same way as long as you buy them. Be careful, some sellers say this does years 1999 to 2025, what it's going to be, and they don't. So have a good old check, make sure that not little bits and bobs have changed. I've made sure the one I've purchased. Do you buy a Technigas, a Leo Vince, a top of the range? Up to you, you know. Give or take, they'll still let the gases out. The person that's got this bike has opted for the very cheap and, and happy one. Um, so that should run fine, really. I would have gone for a Technigas, about £20 more, but they didn't want to, so there you go. So I've said to the person, I'll change all this. Don't like it, I'll have it back. I'm not bothered, you know. It's, it's nice and easy, this is. So I'm not going to show you where the two bolts are underneath because you're going to get a little torch and look up and you'll see them anyway. Crack the bolts off, like I've said. Exhaust off. Happy days. Put the new one on and I'll show you that, which for you in a minute, for me, three days. Hopefully a bit warmer. But look at the weather forecast. <sighs> More cold weather. Anyway, guys, let's get on with this. So, guys, a few days later, what does six pounds get you? It gets from this pretty horrible, ridiculous thing here to, I have to say, rather pretty chrome exhaust. The swan neck's important. That really counts. And this has got bit on it, which you probably can't see yet. Full power! Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Obviously, a bit of adjustment to go on. First look, yeah, it's all okay. Um, it will rust, all right? Don't expect it to stay this yummy for ages. A bit of road salt, and yeah, it's gonna look a bit poo. However, don't come with any gasket. Um, comes with a little, comes in a box and a bag, as usual, and it comes with a little bit in here. Uh, I can't see this gasket in there if I'm wrong. Well, while you're on here, let's find out, shall we? Uh, bolt for that. I don't know whether it will fit on the original little bit or not uh, rather than having to unbold it all you know let's see and in here the da, da gasket i stand corrected and it looks like it comes with a couple of bolts for it i'm going to use the original two they were nice and long they were where are they let me have a look and that's the bolts that hold the other bit on and there they are they're nice long ones long reach for the actual put the exhaust on so i'm going to use them good sturdy ones ah Let's see then, I'll line this up, put it on, use the gasket, a bit of gasket seal, uh, a little bit of tack around here. Come on guys, 66 quid. Most exhausts of this calibre are double the price. You get what you pay for. We're realistically wanting to hear so much the sound, but what it does for the money as well. It should allow all them gases, I mean the size of the neck is much bigger, and the exhaust is allowing the gases faster out, should go well. So where are we now? Okay, haven't upjared yet. Just wanted to see if it fitted on. Bit of a wiggly woggly mound. But now. Oh my god, that's loud. That sounds like straight through. <laughs> so, change the rollers so it brings the gearing out a little bit more. I'll give it a go on the 62.5 jet, see what it runs like, and then put the 68. But oh my god, you are going to definitely hear this bike coming along now. Um, it looks all right on, I must admit. So where are we now, guys? There is the exhaust. Nice and shiny. And I put the needle back. So let's put that down for you guys to see. I moved the needle. It's got... Um, 
five seconds on this needle and I moved it to the middle. When I opened it up, I had a little dull bit. I put it back down to number four from the height now. Good as gold. Still though. The pull away is <laughs> as good as any motorbike. Like, um, hit well over 30 miles an hour up to 40. Um, I'm going to leave the rollers as they are. I'm going to leave the 62.5 jet in there as it is. It's starting bang on every time, no matter how I try and start in there, any weather. It's cold, as you can see. So if it starts in the cold, it's going to start in the heat. Um, and I'm quite happy with it, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to give it to the person now, let them have a little ride of it. If they want a bit more top end, then I'll make the heavier rollers in there. They can pop back round. But at present minute, it will beat anything from the traffic lights. Um, what I think of this little 66 pound exhaust? Bloody noisy. Um, I would have tried to reward it, but you can't get into this one. Um, you get what you pay for, you know, another 40 quid, and you'd have got one that you wouldn't have been so noisy, um, but would have been the same sort of power. So it all comes down to what you're going to pay for. But full power exhaust so far, thumbs up, starting to rain, we'll call it a day. Guys, like and subscribe, please check out the links around the outside. Um, and yeah, go from there really, drive riding safely. Drive safe, what the hell am I about?